Uh, I'll give you a case in point that I brought up briefly yesterday. This, this, uh, uh, the fact of stem cell research, as many people in this room no doubt are aware, stem cell research is one of the most promising lines in, in biology to generate medical therapies. Uh, and it is not being funded at the federal level uh, for reasons that are religious, for, for re because, because we have this idea that based on uh, rather vague uh, notions of theology that in every fertilized ovum there is a soul and you can't privilege the, the interests of one soul over another even if one is in a petri dish and the other is in a, a man with Parkinson's disease. The first symptoms to come will be the last to go. So I was just curious about the, how the progression of the stem cells work with that. That has been the observation that patients who are suffering from neurodegenerative progressive diseases and uh, like the recovery somehow takes place in the way that the last symptom that they've had is the first to recover and the first symptom that they had is last to uh, recover. So if you've taken a zigzag path to reach to a particular stage in a disease, you will follow that same zigzag path to recover back. So there are certain times, certain things uh, which may have been detrimental during that course of disease and you will pass through that same stages again. So you will just go backwards in so the you same You just process. go backwards in the same zigzag manner that you have reached. Okay. <clears throat> and you found that with neurodegenerative disease or... In and uh, inside out is like we are seeing in all spinal cord injury patients that deep pressures are coming first rather than uh, functions on the skin, uh, the outer part. So they're so that, feeling... So it needs to heal from inside out. Okay. So that is how all recovery is taking place. That is what we are seeing in all our patients. Okay, great. Um, and uh, so a lot has been said in this conference about science not being able to answer questions of morality. Well, I think this is a question of morality that science has answered. Uh, if you look at the details, if you look at the, the human embryos that are destroyed in stem cell research, uh, what is a three-day-old human embryo? It is a collection of 150 cells. Uh, that may sound like a lot of cells to, 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 to lay people, it does, but there are 100,000 cells in the brain of a fly. Uh, now, we, it seems to me if, if our concern is about suffering in this universe, uh, it is rather obvious that we should be more concerned about killing flies than about killing three-day-old human embryos. Now, this, this may sound like a very provocative claim. I would argue that it shouldn't if you look at the details. I would say something like this. Indian doctors are very well known worldwide. Their skill sets are something which is amazing. Wherever they have gone, they have established their own skill set to become a niche for many a difficult diseases to be treated you find in any top vertical in medical field you find uh, people like uh, Dr. Cherian kind of uh, equivalent uh, guys from India who have gone abroad and settled down and then they are doing extremely well. Stem cell therapy as such I think has also been practiced in India quite a long time back. Bone marrow transplants we have heard very commonly there is nothing but stem cell transplant. We have uh, hospitals like Adair Cancer Research, we have hospitals like CMC where our own doctors have been performing it for ages together. Tata Memorial in Bombay, Narayana Hirudayalaya in Bangalore, Hyderabad is known for uh, stem cell treatment for eye treatments, eye ailments. You have so many hospitals that are now taking up the stem cell therapy. Abroad also it's the same case. You have therapies happening all over and uh, Singapore is quite famous. Bangkok is also equally famous. You talk about in the East. You have Sydney Cord Blood Bank, which is attached to the Sydney Child Trust Hospital, is also quite famous. You have hospitals like this happening. Therapies are something that I think doctors have specializing in, and doctors have been using this as a fantastic uh, source for treating people. I wouldn't put anything else on this, but I think there should be more and more awareness, more and more uh, hospitals to join this, more and more people to get into this stem cell therapy so that the cost again comes down on the therapy portion of it so that normal common man can also use the therapy for uh, treatment. 
Now, many people, of course, will argue, well, the difference between a fly and a three-day-old human embryo is that a, a, a three-day-old human embryo is a potential human being. Uh, this runs into problems. Every cell in your body, given the right manipulations, every cell with a nucleus, is now a potential human being. I mean, literally, every time you scratch your nose, you have committed a holocaust of potential human beings. Uh, planning for their child's future is something that comes naturally to Indian parents. Only now, it's not about investing money, but in stem cells. Blood cells taken during the child's birth and saved to be used to treat illnesses later in the child's life. Such investments are still new in India, but they're already becoming popular, even in small towns. Pearl's just 20 days old and her parents are already investing in her future. It's not the usual children's growth plan but stem cell banking. Blood taken from her umbilical cord will be preserved for 21 years for possible use in stem cell therapy. At nearly 1 lakh rupees, it doesn't come cheap. But that's not stopping hundreds of parents from small towns and districts of Maharashtra. Families like the Shahanes who live in Nasik think it's the best investment. अगर मैं अपने बेबी को कुछ दे सकती हूँ, as a mother, मतलब दे सकते बेबी के लिए तो ये बहुत अच्छा गिफ्ट रहेगा। Pallavi Margude, an Amravati resident, also banked her daughter Hridaya's cord blood. Like the Shahanes, the Margudes have no major medical history, but they decided to invest anyway. हमने वो जो easy plan option है उसको opt किया है, जिससे हमें पहले 10-10,000 की किस्त भरी है, तीन किस्तें, so total 30,000 भरे हैं collection के पहले। और बाद में पांच साल में आठ हजार के जो ये किस्त है वो हर साल में भरने हैं पांच साल के लिए। With over 20 million births every year, stem cell banking can be big business in India. So not just major companies like Reliance, even smaller organizations are offering loans. The only point which was coming in between the idea of banking and really getting it getting translated into you know people finally banking was the cost. And that was one of the reasons why we decided to move into, start creating EMI schemes, which would be comfortable for people to pay. But experts fear many of these banks are not giving families the right advice, like telling them that stem cell therapy is not a hundred percent guarantee. Banks, they are uh, trying to encash the emotional uh, aspect of the childbearing. For sure, these banks are the commercial banks. They want people to uh, store more and more power bread so that they expand and do more research again. What they are saying is that you can use the power blood for a number of disorders. That the same power blood can be used very easily for the parent and the uh, sibs also. Mm -hmm. But the likelihood that the stem cells will be required by the bad child and the uh, relatives is very little. Experts insist that strict guidelines be enforced on the way stem cell banks operate in India and that the banks should promote public banking so the stem cells can be used to benefit the larger public instead of just the family that's banking it. With Prachi Wag in Mumbai, this is Shai Venkatraman for NDT. Uh, so the, the argument for, for a cell's potential doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, but let's, let's take this a little bit further. Let's say we granted that every three-day-old human embryo has a soul worthy of our moral concern. Uh, there are other problems that await this, uh, this uh, description. First of all, embryos at this stage can split into what we call identical twins. Uh, now, is this a case of, of one soul splitting into two souls? Embryos at this stage can fuse into what we call a chimera. There are many people in this room could have developed in this way. Now, I, I suspect that there are theologians trying to figure out what has happened to the extra human soul in such a case. Uh, it, it's time we realize that this arithmetic of souls doesn't make any sense. It's intellectually indefensible, but it is morally indefensible, given that these notions really are prolonging the scarcely endurable misery of tens of millions of human beings. Do you want to sit up, No. You okay? I want to sit on the bed. Okay. Oh, that bed. Okay. Yeah. We're going on that bed. Happy, don't worry. Don't worry, happy. I'm being very excited to go on that bed. You did last time. Hmm. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Stop. Four. Five. And because. Uh, because of the respect we accord religious faith, not even just people of faith, even advocates of stem cell research 
uh, accord this the, the faith respect. Uh, we can't have this, this dialogue uh, in the way that we should. So I submit to you that if, if you think that the, the, the interests of a blastocyst, a three-day-old human embryo, just may trump the interests of a little girl with spinal cord injury or, or a person with full body burns, uh, your moral intuitions have been obscured by religious metaphysics. Uh, and this is a kind of blindness that is very well subscribed in our society. And it's a blindness that goes by another name. It goes by the name of religious faith. And we have been cowed into respecting it.